all of you for um, for joining us today. I know you have uh, a lot of things going on on a Friday, and uh, it's probably sunny wherever you are on campus. So, really do appreciate you uh, spending a little bit of time with us. Um, a couple a couple of notes before we get started. Uh, I know you all have a lot of briefings, and they all kind of run together. Um, I was there once not too long ago. So I'm going to try my very best today to um, to do two things for you, um, and some of this we'll have to probably defer to the Q&A, but um, really give you some honest answers uh, about the good, the bad, and the ugly of consulting. Um, listen, we think this is a great career choice, uh, and if you're going to do it, we think AT Kearney is a great place to do it. But um, it's not for everybody. It's, uh, it's a very demanding job. Uh, there's a lot of travel, and at times there are really long hours. So um, we want to give you a good idea of what it's really like, because it's not going to be good for you or us to, um, to just kind of say all the great things we do. Um, other thing we want to do is let's see if we can make this entertaining. I, I know it's hard with a webinar format, but um, we'll try to make it casual, and maybe when we get to the discussion later, uh, we'd really appreciate you all just uh, you know being forthcoming with your questions and and open, and uh, let's see if we can have a discussion. So um, with that, um, let's let's go forward and introduce you to my esteemed colleagues on the phone. Um, why don't all of you say something, and then I'll, I'll introduce myself at the end. So let's go to Mauricio. Hi, everyone. Here is Mauricio. I'm a manager out of our Chicago office. I've been with the firm for a little bit more than uh, three years. Happy to take uh, any questions at the end, and really excited to talk to you all today. I can go next. Hi, everyone. My name is Varun, and I'm a manager from the Chicago office. I joined AT Kearney in 2017, having interned with the firm in 2016. I graduated from Michigan Ross, um, and I'm very happy to be here and really happy to answer any of your questions. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Emma. I'm an associate out of the New York office. Like Varun, I'm also a Michigander, so go blue if there happens to be any uh, Michigan people on the line. Um, I've been with the firm for a couple of years and very excited to talk to you all today. Thanks, Emma. And um, as Norbert said, Ryan Elliott, I'm a partner in the Washington, D.C. office. Um, I actually started my career in consulting 20 years ago at, um, at one of the accounting firms with a consulting arm. And um, I went to business school. I really wanted to make the jump into a pure play management consulting company. I went to Virginia. Uh, if there's any people from UVA on the phone, we will be at the tailgate tomorrow. Uh, would love to uh, meet you over beer, um, and uh, otherwise have fun at your respective schools, tailgates. Uh, uh, you'll miss those days before too long. Um, in terms of my work structure, just very quickly, I tend to split my time in between two segments, um, aerospace and defense, and within there I do a lot of work within space and space systems, so things like satellites and rockets, um, as well as shipbuilding, uh, so kind of low-rate production, very highly engineered products. I do operations work on in those fields. And then on the other side, um, I really get to use both the left and right side of my brain. So uh, I do a lot of private equity work, strategy diligence, really broadly across um, industrials. Um, so that makes uh, uh, makes makes me always busy because I got to think of strategy and ops at, at all times. But uh, it's it's fun for me. All right, so let's let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the firm here. We can flip to the next page. Might be a little latency, but uh, oh, there we go. Me and AC Carney. So, um, just a, a few fun facts about us. We're we're the fourth largest pure play management consulting firm. Um, I think some would say we are in a challenger position, which we love to be in. We um, we have uh, two thirds of the Fortune 500 are clients. We have offices in 40 countries, 60 offices. Um, about 3,500 people and uh, 20,000 global alum alumni. And we had um, an event last night, actually, globally. We called it AT Carney Day. I was here in the D.C. office where we invited our alumni from all over the world to our different offices to kind of reconnect, um, which was a great event. And just, just kind of a note about management consulting in general. Uh, I'll admit it's not just us. When you leave, um, your alumni just like when you all leave your respective schools. So um, there's lots of reasons to leave. I actually left myself for two years to join a startup and came back. That's very common. Um, it's, it's kind of a revolving door in a way, which is kind of a pretty unique thing to the industry. 
Um, and it's just you're, we're at AT Carney. We're encouraged to try new things, to learn. Um, sometimes people stay in those career paths. Sometimes they come back. Um, you'd be surprised how, how many partners and principals have left and come back. It, it's it's a very high number actually. In terms of our overall market positioning and our size, listen, we we really like where we are. Um, 3,500 consultants is, is considerably smaller than the biggest strategy firm and, and is dwarfed by the big accounting firms. Um, and with that size, it gives, us, it gives us thorough global reach. We can work with people all over the world. Um, and in fact, I think we're probably better connected than a lot of other firms based on my discussions with, with friends at other firms. Uh, because we kind of have to be. Um, we don't necessarily have the expert we need down the hall, but we work very well globally. Uh, and it's really pretty amazing. We, we get together as a partner group every nine months. Actually, next week we have our global partner meeting in Chicago. And it's, it's very important that we all stay globally connected. Um, with that comes a lot of opportunities for new consultants, new associates to, um, to kind of join our network globally and uh, have opportunities all over the world. Just to, just to touch on that a little bit, I do think that the size is just such a unique thing about the firm, and it's really shaped my experience here. Um, I actually came in at the, at the analyst level, and within my first year of consulting, I got to travel internationally for work. I was in meetings with C-suite executives, um, and I just had this broad experience that I don't think I would have gotten at a larger firm. Um, and now going into the associate role, which um, all of you out of MBA would be uh, joining as, it, it's kind of, it kind of blows my mind sometimes, the things that I am put in charge of and, uh, you know, the cool stuff that I get to do. And I do think it's because we run, you know, some leaner teams um, and, and kind of get that experience. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. And, um, and just, just from my perspective, uh, we do have global clients. We have global projects. So um, uh, I worked for a small company, a small consulting company, for um, a short period of time. And there's lots of advantages to being small. Um, so it's not necessarily better or worse. But a company like my old one, a true boutique, really couldn't compete with um, with the big firms for global work. So we're we really are at a sweet spot where we're small enough to um, to be globally connected, but big enough to serve major clients. Um, besides our scale, uh, we spent a lot of time there. Uh, a few other, a few other notes about us. Uh, we really do take pride in our diversity, um, and that goes across um, multiple facets. It's not just um, um, you know our backgrounds, but it's also just how we think. That goes back to the DNA of the firm. Uh, I don't think it's in this particular presentation, but a lot of them have a quote from none other than Andrew Thomas Carney himself. Um, about the value of diversity in our thinking. Um, and as consultants, we look at that um, as essential to coming up with the correct, the best solution for our clients. Sometimes it's a little bit harder because when you've got people from different backgrounds, it can take longer to get to consensus position, but it's usually better, well, more well-rounded uh, recommendation. And, and we're, we're obsessive with the quality of our recommendations around here. Um, uh, we are we are very committed to gender balance. In fact, we are um, our input, so our hiring is gender balanced. Um, we've got a long way to go as a firm, I believe, to to get better gender balance throughout the ranks. Uh, so we might as well just be honest about it. But it starts with hiring, and that's what um, that's where that's what we're working on right now. Anything else to add here, folks? Ready to go forward. All right, so Mauricio, tell me about how I can realize my potential. Thank you, Ryan. So I want to talk to you all a bit about our vision, our goals, and how we are going to reach them and realize our full potential. So um, our first mission is to create lasting success for our clients, our people, and our partnership, right? So and, and this vision is centered about these three key pillars here that we have in the page. So. First is all about the capabilities, second about the client, and lastly, our culture. So capabilities is about building and investing in leading edge capabilities, and that's not just technologies, but also our people, right? We need to invest in our consultants, and that comes across in, in different ways, right? It's, it's not just in training, 
It's also in an apprenticeship model. It's also in our mentorship role. So that cr comes across the board in many different ways. So that's the first one, capabilities, right? It's a core thing that we need to get right. The second one is about the clients. And that's a, a way to think about um, the w work that we do because it's not just about a single project. You're there building a relationship and you're building a client and you need to make sure that that client is successful. So that's the way we think about our clients and building uh, relationships, right? And, and lastly, our culture, uh, as Brian shared uh, a, a little bit about that, uh, our, we try to build a culture of, around success, dedication, uh, hard work, and it's, we call it the essential brightness, right? We want to do what is correct, what is right for our clients. And the way to do it is being connected globally and having a, a culture that we appreciate one another. So the, the idea is that we are all of this together as a firm and we tap each other's talents. So that's really about uh, our culture and how we, we work in our, in our engagement. Uh, Brian, the others, any, any examples uh, to share on those three key, key pillars? I feel, I think I feel like we're up five already. Yeah, go ahead, please. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to emphasize the culture portion of it. I know with capabilities and clients, some of you may be thinking, well, yeah, of course, you're a consulting firm, you have to have capabilities, you need to have clients. But um, I think what sets us apart really is our culture. Um, Ryan spoke so much about how we're really well connected as a global firm. And I think that the a large part of why that's true is because we have a culture of wanting to help each other. I think that we all realize that we're, we're in this together and when we're helping a client out, it's not just me sitting in a room with a client, it's the full force of AT Carney helping that client out. So I can pick up the phone or I can send an email out to someone that may, someone in the firm that I may not have spoken to at all before. Uh, we may not have a common connection, but I can say, hey, I, I heard that you have, have some experience in this field or you have some expertise. Can we jump on the phone to talk? And they will always get back to me. Um, I have a lot of belief in that, and I think that's uh, that's because we have a really strong, really collaborative culture. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point, Varun. Thanks for thanks for jumping in. Um, and yeah, just a broader point, um, some some advice for all of you as you look at different career choices, different consulting companies. Really, really do your best to get a feel for the culture. The, you know, cultures you can't really rank them. One's not better than another, but. You have to figure out where, where you feel comfortable, where you want to work. And that's what did it for me when I joined the firm, um, especially when I came back to the firm after the startup. Uh, you, you know, you do have lots of options when you're more senior. But it's really, I'm going to be doing this work. And across our top few competitors, we, we, we do a lot of the same work. You, you, we have to because we're competing for the same work, right? So it's not really logical to say that, you know, it's all that, all that different. So it's, it's how do you want to accomplish it? Who do you want to do it with? And um, there are, I have friends in, in other firms who frankly probably are happier there than they would be at our firm because um, it just matches with their personality better. Um, our firm, it's, it's culture is very difficult to describe. We're, we're very flat, um, we're a bit casual, probably, um, you know, some could say to our detriment at times. Um, <laughs> But because you know we don't we don't necessarily roll into a room with a bunch of arrogance, and um, I'm not accusing anyone of that. But sometimes that can be effective in <laughs> in showing you know what you're talking about. Um, so so we're sort of humble, to, and sometimes to a fault is, is my point. But uh, the the point is. Um, get to know get to know the people as best you can, and I know here we are in a webinar, and it sounds like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth, but um, just generally uh, any any sort of contact points I think is good for you to understand how the firms work. All right, um, let's move forward. I'll talk about our capabilities here a little bit. So, as I said before, it's a pretty much a full suite of capabilities across all industries. Um, we're stronger in some of these than others. Um, it's probably not too hard for you all to research. Um, I will say that across our competitors, <laughs> everyone has a little bit of a different business mix. Um, and if you think about strategy and operations consulting, there, there really are two buckets. There's, there's strategy and really top line and growth, how do you grow the pie? And then there's operations and, and bottom line and, you know, growing EBITDA. 
and the work tends to be a little bit different, you know, the former being more strategy oriented, the latter being more operations oriented. Among our competitors, our mix is a little bit more in favor of operations, I'd say. Um, we're, we're often called the preeminent operations consulting firm, but I uh, don't want you to think that we just do ops. It really is a mix, as I explained earlier. Um, a lot of what I do is strategy in the private equity side. The, the other thing to note on this page that is a little bit unusual, uh, we do have the Global Business Policy Council, which is um, the best way to describe it is an in-house think tank. It was ranked, I believe, number two in the world, maybe, maybe three, um, among non or for-profit think tanks. Sorry, we, we don't have any non-profits um, with NAC Cardi, but for-profit think tanks. And um, their capability is pretty amazing in predicting global trends. They happen to sit here in Washington with us, and uh, they are always just completely on top of geopolitical developments. Uh, we get an email as partners every week about what's going on that just makes us smart for clients and how it will impact their, um, their business outlook. Anything to add, folks, or we want to move forward so we have more time for the QA? I, I would just add a little bit to, um, you know, all of those different industries and, and types of work that you were showing on the previous page. Um, I think another really cool thing about the firm is that you can truly work across so many different um, industries and services. So like, I've done work with auto, media, consumer products. Um, I've done some private equity work, uh, really just across the board. Um, and I just want to reiterate that I don't think that I would have, you know, necess necessarily got that experience elsewhere. Um, and it's really cool to be able to bring things um, across industries and across um, different types of work. Like even if you're working on a, a more ops-focused project, uh, when you step into a, you know, strategy top-line transformation, that stuff always comes back um, and always works its way into the strategy, and I think it makes us uh, really unique. That's a good point, Emma. I'm looking at the different icons here, and I've worked in all of these except no chemicals, oil, or gas, so process industry is not my, not my jam. Um, haven't worked in health. <laughs> But every other industry, which is pretty incredible. Um, yeah. And you, you do start to focus, people do it at different times. For me, it was in the, in the manager years, and there's lots of reasons for that. Um, but the funny thing is, before business school, I actually worked in, in um, I was a consultant, but I focused on media. And um, I got kind of sick of it. So when I came to AT Carney, I told them that I wanted to experiment, experience as many industries as possible, different types of projects as possible. I would have never guessed that I would be an aerospace and defense partner. But when I had my first project, I was like, wow, ships are really cool. And then once I got into the space stuff, I mean, let's face it, we're all a bit nerdy, right? I couldn't believe I could work on on, on spacecraft. Um, I really did work on a, a really large rocket for a while and how to, how to build them for hundreds of millions of dollars less. Um, yeah, so kind of geek out on this. What's that? Could you take it for a ride? <laughs> uh, they, they didn't. They didn't invite me to do that. I did get to tour the vertical integration facility in Cape Canaveral, though, um, which was it was pretty amazing. You know, it was like six stories high, um, where the rocket was being integrated, where it would be launched uh, shortly thereafter. Um, the unfortunate thing was, you know, it's like Orlando, Florida area, right? So 102 degrees, high humidity, and had to climb six flights of stairs, but well worth it. Um, and, and by the way, if you really want to have fun stories, and, and I know we probably don't have time today, but it's it's all those crazy stories about consulting that really make it fun, like the time you, you climb six flights of stairs to see how rockets were integrated and it's a 102 degree day. Um, you know, I've heard other stories and frozen barren tundra of, of Canada near like a mining site or something that uh, sometimes they're not fun at the time, but you know, that's what builds character. <laughs> and uh, it, it, if you're not exposed to lots of really oddball things, then you know, I, I guess you're not really doing it right. I, I, I think that, and also some of you are probably trying to think like, is management consulting really for me? Um, and this is why I said earlier, it's not for everyone. You have to be genuinely interested in learning about lots of kind of oddball, things like niche industries uh if if you're into that if you if you want to learn about you know the supplier to some odd auto component because you're like oh i never really thought about how they make those components 
Um, and even if you're not into cars, then, then it's probably a good career choice. If you already know exactly what you want to do and you've got a very specific idea, I mean, I would say just go do that. The recruiting team would kick me if they could reach me, but I'm trying to give you guys honest advice. Um, <laughs> But it, but it really is um, it really is about wanting to learn about lots of new things and sometimes they're a bit esoteric. Okay, Rob, tell us about why clients love us. And by the way, recruiting team, it's cheating to put Stone on this because he's an ex AT Carney partner. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but that's okay. Uh, incidentally, um, if there are any UVA people, Sean Monahan is going to be hosting a Stone Brewing. Uh, Beer tasting slash operation slash consulting event at uh, at UVA. Uh, I think about a month or so. So keep your eyes out for that. All right, Rob. I'm uh, not Rob. This is Varun, right? Yes. <laughs> well, that that event sounds wonderful, and I hope I can get an invite to it. Um, well, I, I've been so I, I wanted to shed some light on like how we work with clients, and um, I full can complete. In complete honesty, I haven't worked with any of the clients that are shown on the page, so I'm just going to tell you about a client situation that I was in uh, where uh, that, that, dis that distinction or that difference in the way we work uh, versus some other, some other peers of ours in the industry came across. Um, so I was, working, I was working on a client that I, uh, that I just pulled off this past Monday, and um, I was working with one of the HR managers, and I sat down with her for lunch, and she said, um, I just wanted to, you know, get to know you better. And I said, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I'm more, more than happy to talk anytime. And she said, well, look, um, we're starting this large consulting project, and um, I used to work at a different company before this, and uh, I didn't, I didn't really understand what the consultants did. And I said, so what do you mean? I said, well, they just sat inside a room all day, and then we didn't really know who they were, and we just, no one ever spoke to them, and we. <laughs> that they were doing something important for the CEO and then lo and behold a few months later they're gone and then there's a bunch of new changes and decisions announced and we were all just thinking well that must have been the consultants but we had no idea who they were like they didn't speak to us they didn't speak to anybody they, we just saw them walk into the office go into a room sit there all day and, and just leave um, and I said well that, that sounds really strange how did they not speak to anyone how did they not um, interact with anyone or get to know anyone better and I think that's that to me, um, that made me think. And, and I sat back in my chair and said, I've never done that on any of my IT Carney projects. Um, I've been pushed, in fact, by a principal on a previous project saying, hey, you're sitting in the team room for too long. And I want you to go out there and find the client to go have coffee with. Um, I think that that's, that really speaks to the nature of, of the way we look at our work, um, which is it's not that we're walking in assuming that we're the smartest person in the room and we already have the solution to any problem that's thrown at us. It's more that we want to help our clients with the problems that they have and allow them to take full ownership of it. Um, we know that in consulting, as is typically the case, you're not there forever, which means that what you want to leave behind with your, con with your clients is um, the capability for them to, to continue to run a better a better company, a better business, um, having learned something from your engagement, and also know that they can trust you to come in there and speak frankly to them, know where they're coming from, and really just work shoulder to shoulder with them as opposed to walking in there and just saying that you're wrong, I'm right, I know the right answer, just do what I say. Um, that's never been the personality on any of my projects at ET Carney, and I think that plays in a large part to our success with our clients um, and our longevity with our clients because they they truly feel like we can come in and be be a part of their company um, and not just talk at them but work with them. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, when I work in more manufacturing environments, I've heard clients say before that they hire us when they need someone who can work on the shop floor but also the boardroom. Uh, mm -hmm. I've heard horror stories, people who are really good with the board but terrible with the people on the floor. Or, or vice versa, right? Um, and and some of that kind of, I think, comes from our DNA where uh, I, I think we are down to earth, we do want to talk to everyone, but also um, as effective as anyone with, with tough CEO level issues and able to conduct ourselves around uh, the board. Absolutely. All right, let's talk about our culture and values in action. And I think we're going to each try to tell a story. Uh, we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep it brief, but we'll kind of go around the horn. So um, I'll, I'll go last. 
Uh, Emma, why don't you jump up? Oh, yeah, go for it, Mauricio, please. Okay, so um, I, I want to share my story, and I think it shows the, the value of curiosity and our ability to explore new gr grounds and carve your space. So my background is in marketing in CPG back in Brazil. I'm from Brazil. So I went to B school, decided, yeah, I want there's, there's all these cool things that I'm learning about. So I think consulting would be good for me so I can go there, explore, and see what is out there. Um, so I went through the summer program, then I joined uh, full-time. And uh, at pretty much like Brian said, uh, I've been doing like so many different things in different industries. And what is very interesting is that you have the ability to carve your own path. And when you start realizing what are the things that you really like and uh, the people that you really like to work with, you can start uh, you, you can start making those decisions to put you in the path to to work on the stuff that you really like, and that's something that uh, I really appreciate about AT Kearney because if you're in the Chicago office, in the Atlanta office, you still have the uh, the the same ability to be staffed in projects across the North America. So it's not that oh I need to go to Texas to be in oil and gas. That doesn't really matter that much. So if you're curious about different industries, different practices, or whatever it is, you have the ability to to go there and make your own path to to explore this new ground. So now, with the marketing background, now I'm I'm aligned to the health practice. I'm, I've done a lot of M and A work as well. So you have the, that ability to really figure out, understand what you're passionate about, and make your path, path uh, on that uh, on that. Yeah. Things that you really love. Yeah. Great point, Murcio. Um, I, I guess I just wanted to make um, another smaller point. The way we're organized, the uh, North America is one business unit, and the, the most common question I get from students is, uh, which office should I join, and what does that office do? But um, our office is really uh, America. We're kind of one, or not even goes beyond America. North America. We're one big happy family, and um, it, it, the offices are kind of where you, you go when you're not on a project or on a Friday or if you're on a local project. Um, but uh, our P&L is at, the, is at the, 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 the continent level, so it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. If you want to do airspace and defense work but live in Chicago, you can do that. You're going to be on a plane a lot um, because, cause, you know, airspace and defense work isn't in Chicago. Or if you want to be auto in, in um, Dallas, like I'm, I'm thinking of particular people who do that. Um, you can do that as well. So there's a lot of freedom um, as to where you want to live, and you know where you want to live necessarily doesn't coincide with what kind of work you want to do. Um, and I think I think that is pretty unique to us as well. All right, let's let's keep going. Varun? Oh, Emma, sure, great. I can uh, I can jump to uh, to solidarity there. Um, I, I honestly think this is just such an important value for the firm. I'm trying, I, I, when I was trying to think of stories, there were so many stories I could think of, and it's all around kind of the team coming together and solving a problem or helping each other out. So um, I, I might pick on Varun a little bit here, but Varun and I were on uh, a project, and it, it, was a little, it was a little intense. We had some long hours, but people on the project would, even if they were finished with their work, would check with other teammates to see if there was any way that they could help, even if it was going out and getting coffee for them, getting food, um, what have you. So I think that you know, those instances really show the solidarity. In the good times, I think it's very easy to, to, to you know, be, a, be a team. It's when it's a really tough instance is when you see people really stepping up. Um, on another project, I even had a partner once sit almost all night with us um, and crunch numbers next to me. A partner sitting there crunching numbers next to me, um, and that was. Let's not pick on partners. We can do math. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was very impressed. You gotta get here somehow. Come on, man. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a little credit, Ryan. <laughs> um, and it was just. 
you know, she knew that we were really in a crunch time and had no problem sitting there with the team and, you know, getting, getting her, rolling her sleeves up, getting her hands dirty. Um, and I think that really just attests to how truly great the people are here um, and how much we think of ourselves as one, one big team with one goal. Thanks, Emma. By the way, we're doing a great job of talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's really, <laughs> yeah. it's a lot of the good, but that's okay. Uh, that, that's fine. Um, no, I, I agreed with your, your point at the beginning that, yeah. you know, I think that also as a firm, we're very honest. Like, we're not going to sit here and tell you that it's all, you know, sunshine and rainbows. Like, there, there's tough times, but you're working with such incredible people that the tough times are, you know, not that bad. Uh, uh. Oh, and by the yeah. way, I, I think in one of these briefings we had the discussion like, so, so you guys talk about long hours. How, just just some, some table stakes or some, some basic information here is that we try really hard to avoid working on weekends. It does happen. Um, and more often than not, it's, it's um, you know, maybe an hour here or there to fix something up. But that, that's kind of a priority. Um, and Fridays are generally really easy days. My office has a happy hour every day at 4, and most people get here between 9 and 10. Um, yeah. But it's kind of like Monday. <laughs> yeah, but Monday they through Wednesday, you're, you're probably working pretty late, and you know Thursday you're flying home and you're getting a beer before your flight, and you're kind of <laughs> relaxed. So it's it's not that bad, but it's also not a 40-hour week job. So we just want to be honest with all of you. Okay, um, who else we got here? Um, Brun, right? Um, I can go next. Yep. Yeah. So um, I think we've. We've spent a lot of time talking about how we approach our clients and how we approach our consulting job, but I actually wanted to show how some of our values come in action even when we're examining the way that we do things within the firm. Um, so I wanted to talk about boldness, and for uh, just as an FYI for, for everyone, I'm, I'm part of a diversity network within the firm. Um, so we have, we have a couple of networks, and Emma will share more about that soon. Um, but I'm part of the Proud Network. Uh, or the uh, LGBTQ plus diversity network. Um, last year, we were at our annual planning session in New York, and I think we all just sat down across the table from each other and we said, our network's not really doing the best that it can do. Um, I think we, we ask ourselves these questions so often when we're on client engagements and say, is this the best solution? Are we doing the best thing we can for the client? Um, but this was, it was sort of natural for us to say, are we doing the best we could for ourselves? Are we uh, are we organized in a way that the dis that this diversity network is really educating people about what it means to be LGBTQ plus in the workplace? Um, are we helping our members in the best way possible with their careers? Um, are we recruiting the brightest LGBTQ plus talent to make sure that our firm's diversity is always um, always the best that it can be? And I think. It, what what I took away from that session I was so amazed by was that everyone just said no. We can do better. We can. We have to do better for ourselves as well. And we we sat around the table and we we decided that we're no longer going to do a planning session in an office and in a conference room um, and make this just another day. We we need to think differently. Um, so since then, over the past year, the Proud Network has really gone from strength to strength. Um, we we rebranded ourselves, so we weren't, called, we weren't always called Proud, and I'm really happy with the new name. And um, we, we decided to move that boring planning meeting from uh, an office in New York to the mountains of Colorado, which was a welcome change. Uh, we just capped our biggest ever Pride Month in June, uh, which was truly global. We, uh, we really pushed the envelope on educating everybody what it means to be LGBTQ+, not just in more accepting um, parts of the world, but also in more culturally restrictive parts of the world. And uh, next week, we're going to be launching our first ever uh, October Visibility Month around National Coming Out Day. Um, all of this happened within the short span of a few of a few months, um, and was driven by people that have a whole lot of other stuff on their plate. But I think everyone was just very inspired to to do more, uh, to do differently, and to think boldly about how we can do the best we can, even for ourselves. That's that's a great story, Varun, and. Um it kind of reminds me of one of the earlier tenets that, um, that that I probably should have mentioned early on, but it's that we we have a true entrepreneurial spirit in the firm, um, and it's 
it, a very, it, it's another way to say it is there's a, there's a strong lack of bureaucracy. Uh, like I said, I work for a few different consulting companies. I, I've, I've experienced different ways of going to market or different ways of running the firm. And um, if you have an idea here, like no one is going to stop you and say, go for it. I think that's great. You need some money? Great. Uh, I'll give you money for Colorado. I, I love what you're doing. So um, it speaks to our scale. It also speaks to our culture. Um, you, you can definitely make things happen here, and, um, and it's just pretty amazing to see how quickly things will develop, just like Varun explained around Proud. Um, okay, I had a story, but um, I'm going to hold my story to make sure we have time later, and if, if, if we're all bored and you want to hear my boring story, I'll give it to you. So why don't we, uh, why don't we move forward to the next page? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that this is the, the quote you were talking about earlier. Ah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Be back. laughs> um, no, I, I I do think that this quote really does ring true. Um, I think our firm is so incredible because we have um, such incredible different people working here. Um, and when we talk about diversity, we're talking about so many different things. You know, it can be diversity that you you know notice when you see someone. It can be diversity of interest, it can be diversity of background, um, and all of those things come together to really build an incredible place where we have teams that, um, you know, can source so many different ideas. Um, and just to talk a little bit about the types of activities we have, so um, Vernon talked about the Proud Network, which is um, one of our, our groups at Kearney focused on diversity. We also have groups like the East Asian Network. Um, veterans, um, African American, and um, also the Women's Network. So there are tons of opportunities to, you know, really find, you know, a group and kind of push forward some initiatives that you might be excited about. Um, and for me, the, the cool thing is the, the whole firm and your individual office gets to enjoy all of these different networks. So here in the New York office, for instance, on Fridays, we will have events in the office, and oftentimes they're, they're hosted by these networks. So I think one time the proud, the, the proud group, we all went out to karaoke late night on a Friday, um, and it was actually a mixer between the proud group and the East Asian network. So we did hot pot um, at a cool place in New York, and then all went to karaoke. So everyone is also also really embraces this whole idea of intersectionality um, while at the firm. And I think that it's, you know, extremely powerful. Um, and we definitely have a lot of fun, fun doing it as well. But I'd like to also pause and make sure that the other panelists get to uh, kind of chat about their experiences as well. So um, you, this moment, too. So I think uh, the networks are a very big aspect of it. I'm really involved in the Hispanic network, uh, helping with the recruiting piece of it. But this is, for me, this is also, it also translates to being able to just be yourself in your daily work. You don't need, uh, at least that's my experience. I don't need to pretend that I'm someone else, fake something. I can be myself 100% and people accept it. And that's something that I love about, about AT Kearney, that I can, it's as simple as that, I can just be myself with my all my weird uh, tastes of music and food and whatever, <laughs> people accept me and, and that's it. No one's going to question you. And that's something that I really love about the firm. And uh, Thanks, another, Chris. another thing that I I uh, wanted to talk about is, I love coming to the office on Friday um, because everyone gets to, you know, come back and see each other. And probably one of the coolest things is that when you're walking around the office, you can hear five different languages, you know, happening at the same time. Um, it, it just really speaks to the, the global reach of the firm and kind of the, the types of uh, diversity that we bring in. Yeah, you know, and it's also funny. I think about just office coming to office on Friday. 
I, I do work from home sometimes, but, you know, when you've had a really long week and I got kids, I got to take them to soccer practice and just it's easier. But here I am in the office because I really want to see everyone. And uh, I, I don't know. I think others think that as well, which is why our offices are full on Fridays, just because we <laughs> want to catch up, um, which, which is which is kind of speaks to the culture. Sometimes it's a little too much fun on, on Fridays. <laughs> Where no <Right>. first thing. <laughs> That's when you end up first thing is too much. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. Great. Uh, checking the time. We're we're kind of running short, so let's keep going. Um, is it is it question time, Norbert? Almost there. We're almost there. All right. One more page. Yes. All right. So um, I think let's go to the the, the final page. Just uh, here's all of the. Um, oh, uh, yeah. We can just we can just go right ahead and and uh, go into the Q and A. So we're not running perfect. over uh, over too much. I think that'll be fine. Um, so funny enough, you all answered quite a few questions that we got today because uh, because your stories were actually just on point with those. Um, and we talked a little bit about um, some of the offices we have, and I think Ryan, you mentioned uh, that the Americas or the, the U.S. and uh, North America is almost like one office, right? You have a lot of opportunity to move around. Uh, one of the attendees asked about mobility options. If maybe any of you on the panel could talk about um, choosing a specific home office, how flexible is transferring offices, and what are the experiment or secondment opportunities at the firm? Um, I can talk about that, Norbert. So I've, uh, when, I, when I moved to the U.S. for business school, I didn't really have a specific um, destination in mind for, for which office I'd like to join, which is why I think AT Kearney really appealed to me. Um, I know that for, for a lot of you, you may have uh, specific reasons why you want to move to, to a certain city. Maybe uh, you have family there, maybe you grew up in that city, uh, maybe you just wanted to experience what, what it was like to live there. Um, for me, I didn't, I didn't really have that much of a strong preference, uh, which is why AT Kearney was great because of our flexibility with moving, moving offices. Um, we we encourage people to spend you know a year in their in their chosen office, but after that, if you wanted to move uh, within North America to any of our different offices, it is really quite flexible and easy. Um, as Ryan mentioned sometime earlier, you don't have to be you don't have to live in the same city where your client is or where that specific industry works. Um, we have a na national staffing model, so you will get to um, you will be expected to go wherever your client is, which means you can you can live in whichever one of our um, offices most suits you. Um, as to international international mobility, we definitely encourage that as well. Um, we have offices in multiple countries, and uh, there is a very structured and very um, systematic mobility program that a lot of people have taken advantage of. Um, to to move to different countries for up for up to two years. Um, and then they have the option of continuing to work there. Um, I know, I personally know a lot of my friends in the firm who've uh, moved to a variety of countries like um, Australia. Um, I have a really great friend of mine that just moved from Germany to the U.S. Um, I have a friend of mine who's moved from Mexico to the U.S. as well. So there's uh, there's tons of tons of options there. Um, I think. I think that answers the question. I'm not sure, Norbert. But did you have do you have a third part to your question that I didn't address? Uh, there was also part of the question about experiment or secondment opportunities as well. Ah, uh, yeah. Has any experiences? Yep. Um, we do we do periodically um, offer secondment opportunities uh, as the need comes up. Uh, with with a number of our close clients, they are looking for partners who can stay on for longer term engagements. Um, I know that with uh, with a beauty client, we have a couple of consultants who are doing secondment opportunities. Um, we have a consultant doing a secondment opportunity with um, with a women's uh, advancement group in Canada as well. Um, and I know that we've had opportunities in the past with uh, CPG companies and industrial goods as well. So uh, really across the board, and uh, we do open those up to our consultants as they come up. Something I'm learning too. I did not even know that. <laughs> there you go. Um, another question that came through, and I think this is uh, pretty relevant to that conversation we're having about 
diversity networks and the, the mentorship opportunities those provide, but could any of you talk maybe more about other mentorship programs that AT Kearney offers either formal or informal and your experiences with those? Mm -hmm. I, I can talk a little bit about uh, mentorship here. So we do have a formal mentorship process um, or program. And so everyone, as they come into the firm, gets, gets a mentor. And that mentor is really there to help guide you um, as you progress with the firm um, and really you know, kind of be a sounding board for you. So my mentor is just, I cannot say enough good words about, about him. Um, he has helped me uh, immensely, not only kind of navigate uh, through the firm, but setting me up on really cool projects. Um, he has brought me into some cool work that, that he's done um, and also has served as a, as a mentor, you know, outside of the firm. Um, I'm actually, uh, you know, doing some MBA applications myself, and he's one of my recommenders um, and has just really been there for me um, both personally and professionally. Um, outside of those, those formal mentors, um, there's definitely um, a, a lot of informal mentorship that, that, that happens here. So I've had quite a few, um, you know, partners and principals that have helped me along the way, and um, I definitely reach out to them for, for advice, and they're always willing um, to talk to you. I think Ryan mentioned this earlier, but it, we do have a pretty flat structure where there's not a problem with me reaching out to, you know, someone I worked with in the past and just getting time on their calendar or even popping by or, or dropping them at a call. So um, there's a ton of opportunity to really um, get the mentorship you're looking for um, and also uh, give back and, and mentor others. Anybody, if anyone else wants to add in, um, if not, we'll move on to the next question. Um, Evan and I share the same mentor and I can 100% <laughs> agree with everything she said about that. We have some exceptional people who are mentors at AT Carney. <laughs> I know, you, Varun, you missed the dinner. We did a whole, um, so Varun is unfortunately uh, no longer at the, he's not in the New York office, um, but we had a whole like mentorship dinner um, where my, my, our mentor cooked us this like beautiful steak and we had wine. It was uh, absolutely fantastic. <laughs> we were, we, we definitely missed you. I'm writing an angry email about that right now, don't you worry. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, best advice from this webinar is if you do get into the firm, you want to make sure you get the same mentor as uh, Emma and Varun. We're not sharing. <laughs> <laughs> We're not sharing. <laughs> um, all right. Thank you for that. Um, the next question is very uh, skills-focused. Um, so one of the uh, attendees asks, uh, what specific skills are most more favored at AT Kearney given the more operations focused projects that the firm traditionally is known for? Yeah, I don't I don't I don't think um, our business mix really probably I don't think it impacts the, the skill set you need all that all that much from our competitors. Um, it really varies by level quite a bit and um, I think that's one reason experienced consultants are so in demand at uh, at big companies because um, you have to succeed at lots of different uh, skills to keep on progressing. And um, generally, when people come in as a, as a business analyst um, out of out of undergrad, there's a lot of emphasis on well analytics, right? You're being counted on to to do a lot of the number crunching. Associates do a lot of that work as well. Um, and associates, uh, as you as you kind of move into that role, communications becomes increasingly important both verbal, you know, working with clients, working with your team, and, and written, so the notorious PowerPoint, but um, it's a whole other story. PowerPoint is just a tool. It's really about your structure and your story and your message. Um, and then as you become, uh, as you kind of graduate from associate into manager, well, obviously you're learning about project management, um, leading a team. As you shift to become a principal, it, it, the skill set changes again, and it's really increasingly about leadership and about client relationships and starting to be around just general selling. And as a partner, uh, a, a, 
about more than half of your time is focused on business development and, and effectively sales, right? So client relationships uh, become, in relationship management becomes really important. So uh, uh, Norbert probably has the exact answer from the time you can go from associate to partner technically. Uh, it is very fast, but um, very few people do it in the minimum at every single level. And the reason why is just because you might be great at analytics, uh, and then it takes you a little bit longer to figure out the communications element, or, um, or you might be great at managing a project, but you haven't been facing clients all that much to, to sell new work. And that's okay, we, we adjust for that. But the point is it really is a, a very well-rounded set of skills you'll develop in management consulting. Thank you for that. Um, so since we went over a time a little bit, uh, I'm going to end the Q&A, but uh, if anybody has any more questions from the audience, make sure to reach out to us at uh, careers.mba at atconey.com, and as I mentioned before, I'm going to share with you the emails for our panelists as well. Uh, but before we depart, I uh, wanted to thank our panelists for uh, joining us today. Uh, and Ryan um, also will uh, let you know about some of our upcoming webinars. So as I mentioned, this is our first MBA webinar of the uh, season. We have a lot more coming up in the, in the next uh, month or so, um, actually two months or so. Uh, and so we'd love to see you there. Um, Ryan, if you could. Yep, yep. So you guys can all read, but I'll, I'll step through some of them. So former summer associate panel. Uh, these are these are a group of summer associates for who we've uh, withheld their offers until after the panel uh, to make sure that I'm, I'm lying. Um, <laughs> uh, but you know, people who have been through been through the summer can tell you what that, that entails. Um, uh, by the way, our summer associate position is is just like uh, becoming an associate, and you'll learn much more like that. But you truly do get to experience what it's like in consulting. Um, diversity and, and inclusion uh, a few weeks later in October, um, followed by social impact. And then by then, I'm sure you'll all be prepping for interviews and having a great time practicing your cases. So we'll tell you how, how we do that in, in mid-November. And then uh, actually do a, a workshop the next day in November. Thank you for that. And, and uh, the social impact webinars are our newest one, actually. Uh, in this year, by popular demand, uh, we did one for undergrads just a few weeks ago, and it was really great. So I would encourage you uh, to come out for that and look, and, and essentially get to learn more about uh, more non-traditional opportunities within the social impact sphere uh, and projects that we do. Um, I, I really enjoyed it, so I, I hope you will too. Um, so with that said, um, thank you all so much for joining us today. As you can see on the screen there, uh, we have emails for our panelists. Uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, if you'd like to just reach out uh, to recruiting or our entire team, you can use the uh, careers.mba at atcarney.com email. Uh, and we really hope to see you uh, soon again at our next webinars. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs>